Bietenburg. Ja, ons chat met Bietenburg, nee? Ja, ons doen een uh, Matthew Fieldcare volgen bij ons en ons wil juist hom ook vraag, wat is sy vakantie onder andere? Mm -hmm. Matthew, a good morning and morning. welcome. It's so nice to have you. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So, our social media question this morning mm -hmm. is actually, what is your holiday, holiday. plans? Do you yeah. have holiday plans? Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll be in Cape Town. So, I've, I've been living in London for the last year and a half and I've come back this December the first time, so I still haven't been to Cape Town yet. I've come via Joburg, I'm now Pretoria. Mm. Um, so I'll probably just be hanging out with my family and stuff like that. Nothing too special. I think just going to the beach, probably. Well, I that is still not. I guess that's quite special. Oh, yes, that's it is. Exactly. Yeah, uh, it's pretty special, Beach, yeah. Cape Town sounds brilliant. <laughs> yeah. um, Matthew, I want to take it all the way back to where you guys met, where you started Beatenburg. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Um, so Rob is the drummer. He and I met in high school. Um, we, were, we started making music on the computer, playing some jazz together. And then I started studying music and I met the bass player, Russ, there at UCT. Um, and then quite soon, we all started jamming together and um, yeah, just didn't stop really. <laughs> yeah. It's so nice, because you say you guys met in high school, mm. like, you know, you went on this journey from 2008, you've mm. accomplished huge things, mm. such a successful band. Did you ever think, if you look back now, if, did you ever think that you would, guys would get where you're at now? Uh, no, not really. I guess you never imagine, you, you'd hope to be successful, but you'd never imagine the kind of path that the success takes, I suppose, in, in as much as we've been successful. Um, yeah, and so often, whenever we play to people, like like um, two nights ago, we played um, at Constitution Hill and just sort of like first gig in South Africa for a while and just looking out at all these people singing the, the, the words, it's always kind of a surprise somehow. You never quite get used to it. It's always kind of, I always feel just grateful that people actually know the music. It seems crazy to me in a way. Wow. Uh, we were singing a couple of your tunes the entire morning <laughs> oh, yeah. since before five this morning okay. uh, in the studio cool. here while we were prepping. Yeah. And you, you, you made it in South Africa. You were mm. famous. You were a big band. Oh, you're still a big band. But you got yeah. to the level where, yeah. where, where your fame in South Africa, you say, almost sort of held you back and made it difficult for you to break through internationally. There was, I think, I think there was an element of, of sort of um, being uh, locked into a certain sort of cycle of doing things and and the, I think the industry has changed now where I think the outside world is a lot more interested in what's happening in South Africa, even within the time that we've been working. Back then, it was sort of, I remember going to sort of international, like going to London and sort of the fact that we'd done a lot in South Africa didn't really mean much there to them. Mm -hmm. um, and so it did feel like quite hard to make that transition from, from um, success here to success on an international stage. But I think that's... It's, it's, it's even changing as we speak. Um, in in and, what way? Yeah, I, I, I just think the, the sort of international, well, like the music industry as a whole is sort of more far reaching and like, like obviously it's sort of dominated by the, the UK and America, yeah. at least yeah, like in a big way that, mm. that they have like quite a cultural like, you know, power. Yeah. But um, those sort of centers are like looking to the rest of the world and everything's more connected now and it's easy to be an artist in your bedroom and all this kind of stuff with the internet and everything. Streaming changed it. Yeah, I think streaming is probably part of it as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not an expert on these things at all, yeah, but yeah. I guess from what I can sense, it's just that. And, and certainly music from Africa is, is like, is uh, also interesting people a lot more. Yes. Uh, in, in other places, well, which is cool. Um, Matthew, you've accomplished so much. You've been on Jimmy Fallon, for example. Yeah. If you look back at your career, what would you say are some of the highlights? Um, highlights. I think um, it's funny. Some of my highlights are not necessarily the, the, the huge shows, but just sort of even some of our very early shows I, I really liked. And um, uh, it's hard. It's hard. That's a, a tough question. <laughs> um, I think... Um, my highlights are also just like when I write a song that I really like. Maybe that's a, a, wow. a funny answer, but just when, when, I'm, when I'm sitting there and I realize like this is good or when I'm struggling with the lyric and then I finish it and then it's like, yes, that's the right thing. That's kind of like the, the See, biggest highlight. I would have yeah. expected something like playing in Amsterdam or playing in yeah. New York. I mean, that was cool too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of gigs, we've had some really amazing gigs in, actually you said Amsterdam, but in Utrecht we played um, a few years ago and we booked a, a small club and we got there and there were so many people that we had to play twice in a row. So like, 
that they could fill the room Double twice. Set. Yeah, and that, that was definitely a highlight because we didn't expect that there were people there. We'd never played there before, but somehow there were all these people who knew our music, so that was amazing. But it's great to hear that your highlights are more mm, personal. Yeah. Your highlights yeah. are more, are more or achieving that, that creative goals almost. Yeah, that's, yeah that has been... Oops, sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, that, that has been what, what, what sustains me and motivates me but in, a, in a big way. But as you go on, you, you realize how important the connection with people is as well. Yeah. When I was oh. younger, I think I was more like, oh, I don't care, I'm just doing my stuff. But mm. now, you know, it's obviously, it's, it's all kind of meaningless without, without people to respond to what you're doing, whether it's now or later or whenever. But, you know, that, that's always, that's a big part of it. Wow. Mm. Uh, Blijf er eens in geschokken, want na die advertentie breek gesels ons bykie verder. Wel, ons is selfs morgen met Beatenburg en ons is selfs specifiek oor die album On The Way To Beatenburg. Matt, uh, On The Way To Beatenburg, mm. there's a... The album started, well, shall we say, the album is now here, but it started mm. in a time where things sort of ended. It, it was like an organic pause in the band's yeah. timeline. You, for four years, uh, there, there wasn't a, yeah. a real album out, and here it is. But it's it's been a, a dip and a start, like a, it's the beginning of a new chapter, like things should yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's kind of the idea. And it's a collection of, I think it's seven songs. So it's like an EP, mini album kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, and yeah, there was a time when, I guess, obviously with the pandemic, if you say organic, it sort of was like a time when maybe we needed a bit of a break. And that just facilitated that in a weird way. We couldn't really do anything, couldn't go on tour or anything. Mm. So yeah, and, and um, that's, yeah, it's kind of, a, in a way, a stepping stone. Um, I mean, it's, I'm proud of the work itself, but it's also like a pathway to future stuff, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. We're working on a, um, a follow-up as well. So, yeah. and, and a couple of nice songs on the album, the things that, that, that I'm really, really interested in and intrigued by. Mm. Uh, you refer to the chorus of the song 85. Yes. Uh, of the chorus being uh, uh, inspired by a short poem? Oh, so the, yeah, the chorus is a, it's an old, I don't know that much about it, but it's, it's a catalyst, it's an old Roman poet. Mm -hmm. And that's just literally what the translation is. I just remember looking through a little book and seeing that. And, and I think when I was working on the song, I liked the melody and I, I, I couldn't think of any words. And then I had that book there and I just sort of sang the words to the melody and it just fit really well. So, and it had an enigmatic kind of sentiment that I liked. So, yeah. Is this EP the same feel as your previous music or has it changed slightly? Mm, I think there's always a change. Um, it's hard to say what that change is, but yeah, there's a change and there's continuity. So I guess I'm saying yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How difficult, because you just said you moved to London and mm. one of the other members also live in London mm. and someone else also lives abroad. Yeah, yeah, um, in Berlin, yeah. Yes, how difficult is it for you guys to then still get together to tour, to make music? Um, I think it's actually been a bit easier in a way because for us all to pursue different things, I'm also doing a solo project at the same time and it gives us a bit of space when we're not like actually actively touring and doing things to yeah to just like sort of uh exercise other muscles and like and it all comes back into the band when we get together so it, it things are not too far either it's always easy to meet up um when we need to um so in, in a way that that space is kind of kind of healthy i think you mentioned your solo project now and, and you're quite clear about that this does not replace beatenberg no, it's no. just an opportunity yeah. for you also like you say to keep like an exercise and stuff yeah. How excited are you about the solo career? Yeah, very excited. Um, it's, it's a different feeling. I think I don't consciously think I'm writing different music because I just write how I write. But it does feel like it ends up being a little bit, I don't know, more unconstrained by certain things. I mean, constraints are not necessarily negative. I think, mm -hmm. you know, working in the, in the broadly speaking pop idiom that we do, is a deliberate choice and you know we want we want those kinds of constraints because yes. we want to reach people and, and it's, a, it's a specific challenge with myself it's a little bit more like just do whatever i feel and see what comes out which is a nice a nice thing to be able to do as well sure. yeah absolutely uh, in one of the songs uh, on on the way to beatenburg in your new album now is the lighthouse of alexandra mm -hmm. uh, alexandria and and uh, we've been fortunate enough now to quickly listen to a little bit of a sound check that mm. you just did while yeah. we were in the ad break yeah. uh, another catchy kind of tune another catchy 
Yeah. It seems almost too that, that Beatenberg is known for the, the Beatenberg sound and the Beatenberg approaches there. Yeah. Like you say, you, you write a song specific for a certain situation, a certain environment, certain mm. public, certain for the band, the band's mm. sound. Mm. Uh, um, tell us a bit more about that specific song that you're going to perform for us later on. Um, that's a song that I um, wrote when I was house sitting. I, that's what one thing I can say about it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very hot. It was in Cape Town. Um, and then it's, it sat around for a while and I never used it, um, which happens to lots of songs. Yeah. Um, the, the, yeah, I, you mentioned earlier the Beethoven thing, which I yes. think is in the, in the press somewhere. Um, but yeah, the chord sequence I realized afterwards, I didn't deliberately do it, but I realized had come from the middle movement of the Be Beethoven Fifth Piano Concerto which um, this is like famous, very like emotional thing. But yeah, I don't know, it must have been subliminal somewhere in my subconscious. Yeah, I think I'd watched a movie called, um, what's it called? Picnic at Hanging Rock. It's an Australian yes, movie. Yes, Australian movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that, that movement is used in the movie. I think that's why I had it in my head. I mean, I know the piece anyway, but yeah. Um, I was kind of happy, and at least there's no copyright on it because it's, you know, it's, it's okay. I can I can freely Lucky say break. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, and then it, the song obviously transitions halfway through and goes to a much more brighter kind of upbeat thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> what are your plans for the rest of the year? Any shows coming up? Shows next year? Any plans? Yeah, we are playing in Kirstenbosch on the 11th of December. And after that, we are just kind of taking a break and, and sort of working on new songs, really. Um, in, the, in the new year, we've got a tour, a European tour next June. Um, but we'll be, back, we'll be back in South Africa at some point. Um, we just haven't planned anything yet. Hopefully, we'll, we'll come back with um, some new material to play as well. Because we want to put and more this, stuff out. And the 11th of December, it's one of those sunset con concerts in Person Bosch. Yes, yeah. Lovely, lovely yeah. concerts to attend. I don't know about yeah. the performers, if you've enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but no, the it's audience, a lovely place. Loved. Yeah, yeah, it's a lovely place to play. Yeah, definitely. Um, Matthew, thank you so much thanks for so much. joining and us. And thanks so. for accommodating me in English. Uh, like, next time, maybe I'll be able to speak. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, don't worry. I just didn't want to risk embarrassing myself. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you do. Yeah, yeah. We'll adapt. Yeah. Thank cool. you so much. Yeah. Pleasure. This is natuurlijk Matthew Field van die groep Beatenburg en hy gaan ook net vir ons hy liekie sing, bly gris en geskakel daarvoor.